Hey guys, how's it going? It's Joshua Ferris here. We're gonna be taking a look at a really interesting investment property in California. Now this is located in Springville, uh, which is near Porterville and Tulare Visalia area. It's about 21 minutes outside of Porterville and about 47 minutes outside of Tulare. This is a really interesting one and I am gonna go, go ahead and start with uh, just talking about some of the details and give you my analysis of it as a real estate agent and what kind of investment uh, this might be uh, best for. Um, so this is gonna be a little bit longer of a video but we're gonna really dig into it. Um, so hope it brings you some value whether or not you're an experienced investor or if you are just getting started out. Now, um, I am going to go see this property this week with an investor. Um, and really, uh, the thing that I think is important uh, for investors to understand, and this isn't for all investors, uh, but it's important to keep uh, a lookout for uh, properties and opportunities and investments that are different. This is going to be different. This is going to be unique. Uh, this is not your bread and butter uh, fourplex, not your bread and butter 10plex, not your bread and butter 24plex or whatever it is that you uh, look at. This is not your bread and butter commercial uh, space or even industrial space. This is gonna be something a bit more unique and would take a bit more creative of an investor. Uh, but the main gist of this uh, video is that you get an idea of where value is, how to locate that value, and maybe thinking outside of the box, not looking at your traditional uh, types of investments and really thinking, hey, where is the gold going to be mined? Maybe if everybody is going over to that gold mine, maybe I should consider something a little bit different and uh, not have to compete against uh, other in, uh, institutional investors, uh, but really thinking creatively and how to get the most uh, gold out of that mine. So let's go ahead and get started. I don't like long intros. Let's go ahead and uh, start with the details. All right, so a little history about this property. Originally, this was built as a tuberculosis um, care facility, okay? It's currently being used as just regular multifamily apartments. Um, a lot of the units are in uh, disrepair and do need a lot of the value add kind of brought up um, to its livable space. Um, there are 55 vacancies. Um, so it is going to be a, a big project for for an investor, uh, but there's a lot of upside potential. So let's go ahead and get into it. There are 118 units for this uh, at a sale price of 3.75, which is pretty incredible. That makes it only around or $35 uh, per square foot. And if you calculate that all out, that's a pretty good price to your, uh, your individual unit. So here in the San Luis Obispo area, you would be getting a pretty good price if you got a two unit or a two bedroom unit uh, for rent. Maybe it's part of a fourplex. Um, you might be spending 200, 250, sometimes up to $300,000 for one of those units. Here you're looking around you know, 30,000 or something like that. And you divide 118 into that sale price. <clears throat> Gross income after getting the property stabilized is uh, projected at uh, just over $900,000. Now this project, as we're gonna see by, from the photos, is gonna be a big project. It's not something that you can just sit there and let it go. 118 units is gonna require a lot of work, a lot of expenses, but when you're looking at almost a million dollars of gross income, when you look at the sales price, that's a really good rate of return. But like I said, this is not for the faint of heart. Uh, the pro forma cap rate given to us by the uh, the brokerage that is representing them, uh, they're saying it's around 14%, which is pretty incredible. You know, investors that I work with, if they can get a six or seven percent uh, return um, of their cap rate, that's pretty incredible. Here in San Luis Obispo, we have a different kind of a market, specifically San Luis Obispo City, and you're looking maybe four or five percent um, cap rate outside of surrounding areas like maybe Atascadero or Paso Robles. You might see a little higher, mid fives, even up to seven. Um, I found something for an investor in the sevens here. Uh, but that's kind of give you some a perspective, but with higher return, higher risk, right? That's how it usually goes. 
This is a big, big uh, area. This is 35 acres. Uh, there's a lot to it. Uh, let's go ahead and get into what actually is a part of it. So there's 14 separate buildings, right? And uh, like I said, there's 55 vacancies. So what exactly is a part of this offering? All right, so there are 14 buildings, and out of all of those buildings, there are five uh, larger apartment-style buildings with multiple units. Uh, there are two, two duplexes, one single-family tenant house, an administrative office, a medical clinic, a library building, a community building, a memorial building, a cafe-style cafe snack shop, a small motel, and uh, several uh, storage and utility buildings, okay? So there are 71 studios, 41 one bedroom, one baths, three two bedroom, one baths, two three bedroom, one baths, four, or one four bedroom, one bath, and there is a manager house that is a four bedroom, two bath. We have the breakdown right here, as you can see on the screen, 71, 41, three, two, it's a lot of units. Obviously the breakdown's here. A lot of studios, um, but then you've got a lot of the one bedroom and a few of those other buildings. So there's a lot of potential for a creative investor. This is not just your standard uh, multifamily where you just get folks in there and they start collecting the rent. Uh, this has a lot of other opportunities to it, as you can see right there with that description. Let's go ahead and take a look now that we've discussed the building. Let's take a look at the surrounding areas. That's how I like to analyze these types of uh, opportunities, right? Where, where is it located, right? If this property is located in some deserted island, it's not gonna do a whole lot of good or maybe it'll be great as a resort, but you need to have other people around it and have some good industries, have some good incomes uh, in order for people to actually rent it. Who are your customers, right? As an investor, your job, what you're doing, what you're presenting value uh, to the community is a place uh, for people to rest and cook and, and uh, call their homes. So where are the, what's the industry looking like? Where is the, um, uh, the population and where are they working? All right, so Springville is a very small area. It's only uh, around 900 people that live there. Mostly the industry is going to be uh, restaurant or tourism related. There's not really much of an industry at all there. What you're mostly probably going to be pulling from as a uh, potential landlord renting to people would be from Porterville. Porterville has just under 60,000 people living there. And the main industries there are going to be agriculture, mining, construction, manufacturing, retail. J&J Meat Company is one of the main employers, the school district, more manufacturing. There is a casino there, which employs between 500 and 1,000 people, and the Sierra Vista Medical Center, which employs around 500 to 1,000 people, along with uh, Walmart. Now, these units are probably not going to pull in a lot of the medical profession people, uh, but anybody who's working in the retail, um, any kind of um, agriculture or mining or construction, manufacturing, they're probably going to appreciate the um, lower rents there in Springfield or Springville. And when you look at the uh, commute time, it's relatively uh, low, 21 minutes or so over to Porterville. So it's really reasonable to assume that a lot of the people who are renting the units are gonna be coming from Porterville. So it's important to take a look at that industry of that city and where it's headed uh, so that you can get a clear idea of what it is that um, you know, you're offering, what, what your client base is looking for. The average rent for a one bedroom in Porterville is gonna be $923. The average income is around $20,000 for a single person and around $43,000, $44,000 for a household. Now, if you take a look at the 30% for gross income that you typically want to do, right, three times uh, rent. Um, so if you're making around $2,800, uh, maybe you can spend around 800 or so for rent, eight, 900 or so for rent. So for any household that's making around 44,000, uh, you're gonna be able to uh, justify a rent. Um, you know, it's probably gonna be a two bedroom or maybe even a three bedroom house. Uh, you're gonna be able to do justification maybe around $1,000, maybe $1,200 uh, for rent. And so if you see here by the rental 
rate differences. Uh, in Porterville, the average is gonna be $923. And if we take a look, the average rent for a one bedroom, one bath will probably be around six to 700. And then for the um, studios, you're probably looking around 500 to 550. <clears throat> when you take a look at the rates for Porterville versus in Springfield you, can, Springfield, you can see that there's gonna be an attraction for the renters to live in Springville and then commute to Porterville or surrounding areas. Like I said, because of that population being so low at 870, around 900 for Springville, you're probably not gonna be able to pull in enough uh, renters for that area, so you're probably gonna have to go over there to Porterville. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pictures. Let's go ahead and take a Google map view. Uh, you know, picture says a thousand words. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and give you some perspective as far as how the uh, property looks and what kind of potential I think it would need and what kind of a workforce you might need to in employ uh, to really get the property up into uh, livable space for the 55 vacant units. A lot of the vacant units are going to be needing new paint. Uh, they're going to be needing uh, new uh, hardware. Um, you know, a good amount of them are in fairly decent shape, um, but there is going to require some, some work to those. Anytime you have 55 vacancies, um, you are going to require some effort. Now, I worked with a investor of mine and he is stabilizing 16 units up in Yuba City and then they were pr pretty rough shape. Uh, plumbing, flooring, new appliances, etc. And he worked there uh, every other week or so for a few days uh, for the last year. Um, so I would say maybe 30 to 40 hours per month. And he did hire somebody part-time that lived there next door um, to work on those. So it's taken him about one year to stabilize 16 units. Now, that's him working part-time and with a pretty small team. But I would say if you're gonna tackle this as an investor, this is gonna be a big project. It's probably gonna take you close to a year or so to really stabilize the, 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 the units um, and to really get this, uh, this offering into a space, this asset into a space where you can really start generating that income. I would say if you've got a team of anywhere, you know, anything less than five people, it's probably gonna be pretty tough, but um, you're probably gonna be able to pull a good amount of people, good amount of workers uh, from Porterville. So I don't think you would have too much of a trouble finding the kind of labor that you need, but the expectation that I would have if I was an investor buying this property would be it probably need five to 10 people at certain given times to really go through all of those units and get them taken care of um, and really get them up to speed and maintaining kind of landscaping uh, delinquencies that have taken place. Um, so really, if you're an individual investor, this would be a big project unless you have the ability to take on more labor and get that process going. I don't know uh, uh, how much it would take to get this stabilized um, and get those vacancies filled but understand that it is going to be a pretty big uh, task to get that done. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate your comments. Please leave a like and subscribe. It was a very interesting property to check out. Definitely unique. Hope you all have a great day. Take care.